Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you a few different techniques on how to create different highlight effects. Now, if you're part of the Flatback FX crew, you can also download all the project files for this video in the description below. If you're not already a member, then you can sign up or check it out via that same link in the description. Now, this video is based on a question that I received from one of my students about how do I highlight different areas in my animation. So what we're gonna do is I'm starting here with this image. Now, for you, you can use whatever you like. It doesn't have to have a transparent background, but if it does already, then great. But if not, don't worry about it. What we're gonna do is just create a new composition. This can be whatever settings you want. Now, this is simply just going to be our image holder. So all we have to do is just grab our image here, drag it in whatever you've got and then sort of reposition it. Now, obviously this will become a template so you can basically just keep dragging and dropping new images in here. And then all you're going to do is just use the extract tool to essentially just remove that background. And that's all you need to do. So if you drop a new image in, all you have to do is drop it in here, reposition it however you like, and then just remove the background. Because basically we want are these areas here for this particular effect. Now what I'm gonna do is take that that composition and I'm just going to create a new composition from that. So we have that as basically a pre-comp within our comp. Then I'm going to take this image here, which is just basically like a paper background and just sort of drop that in. If you don't have that, you can just simply use like some, uh, like a white solid or something like that. And to this, all I'm going to do is just add a tint, but I'm just going to bring the black level up so that it's a bit brighter. So now what we can do is we, we wanna start sort of bringing some sort of color into this scene. So what I'm gonna do with nothing selected, I'm just gonna come up here to my circle tool, I'm holding shift, and I'm just drawing out a circle. Now this can be whatever color that you want, because we're gonna change the color, but say I set mine to be like this sort of yellow, something like that. What I'm gonna do is come down to the modes. If modes isn't selected, just basically hit that button, it'll automatically change, and you can change this to be whatever sort of blending mode works best for you. In this case, I found that the pin light is the one that we're gonna end up using. Now at the moment that looks okay. You can see that it's sort of highlighting that in a different color, which is fine. But what if we want more custom control over that? So what I'm gonna do is hit Y and just reposition my anchor point roughly there. So what I wanna do is take this background one and I'm gonna change this one to be my black and white. And then I'm just gonna duplicate that and change this to be color one. So this is basically going to be the basis for the tint that we want to use with this particular color. So what I'm going to do is I want the black part of this, so where it's, wherever it's black, I want that to sort of match to the color that I select of this shape layer. We come down to the ellipse, we go down to the fill and where we get the color, what I'm going to do is also come up here with this color one selected. I'm just gonna hold option alt on my keyboard and click this little stopwatch next, next to the black level. And what I want to do is pick whip that one to that color. It's going to match whatever I change this color of the shape layer to basically match that to my layer or the outline effect. Now what we want to do is we want to basically localize it to just that area. So you can use the track map settings. What I'm going to use is the set map feature and I'm gonna set this to be that shape layer one. So I want to just isolate it to that layer. So now when we move this around, you can see it's only affecting that. Now what we can do, if I just minimize this to make it easier, what we can do is now add some sort of things over the top. So if I add, say, the hue and saturation to this, what I can do is say, turn up the saturation, but I want it to be darker than whatever color I've set. So if, for instance, if I start changing this color now, you'll notice that it automatically will make those lines darker. So that's one simple thing that you can do just to kind of have control over that. Something else you can also do is change the hue. So say you want to basically make this slightly different here. I can scale this up. So keep in mind, this is automatically updating as you change that first circle color layer. It's automatically going to match to that thing. Now what I want to also do to that 
is before I move on and add some extra effects, what I want to do is just change the background. Now, if you like these sort of videos and you wanna dive deeper into this sort of subject, or even how to make really good looking animations and all of the things to do with designing animations, right through to actually how to really make your animation stand out. If you're an absolute beginner, then check out my Animation Master course. There'll be a link down in the description. I walk you through the basics of After Effects right into creating some really cool looking animations and effects. If you're more comfortable using After Effects or if you're more of an intermediate to expert, then definitely check out my Animation Pro course. And in that, I go through in a lot more detail into how to actually design animations that really stand out and go into a lot more detail as far as techniques and things that you can do, things you can add into your animations to really take them to that next level. You can check out both courses via the links in the description below. I've had hundreds of students go through these courses and get amazing results. So you can also read and listen to all of the testimonials via those links in the description. So what I'm gonna do is come up here to this color one and I wanna take this set mat, I'm gonna copy that and I'm going to paste it onto the black and white layer. Now what I want to do is I want to basically invert that mat so that it doesn't interfere with you know the shapes that I have over the top. So basically wherever that shape layer goes, it's automatically gonna cut that out exactly what you can see here on screen. The advantage here is if I hit T on that layer to bring up the opacity, I can actually scale down the opacity relative to that other layer. So these are just some cool things you can also add. Something else that to make it really stand out is you can also add a lens. So this is the CC lens effect. And what you can do with this is if you scale this down, you can sort of add a bit of convergence here, maybe scale this up. I'm gonna drag this up to the top here. And then what I, what I need to do is I need to basically set the center because what will happen here is if I move my shape layer, you'll see that it won't actually change that effect. So it just stays stationary. So we want this layer or that sort of lens effect to follow the shape layer. So the way that we do this is I alt click on that stopwatch to bring up the center. If I bring up P, if I hit P on that shape layer, I can parent this to the position of that shape layer. I'm just gonna click away. So now when we move around, you can see that we get that sort of lens effect over that particular shape. One thing that you can do is you can sort of exaggerate this more by dragging this up or down, and that's going to sort of really make that effect stand out. So that's basically how you can sort of add those different things in. From this point, it's just a matter of duplicating it, repeating it, and then just following those exact same steps and just creating different shapes with different colors. So if I go to this layer that I already created, you can see exactly what I've done here. I keep duplicating on the background layer, those set mats. That's to basically mask out all three of those circles. What you'll notice here on my third shape layer, I've had that effect go wider than the circle that it's basically masked. So all you need to do is basically just turn off that set mat and you'll end up with that layer basically bigger than that than the shape above, if that makes sense. So if I turn off that CC lens effect, if I scale this up and down, you'll notice that it goes outside that box. That's because we don't have a track mat for it to stay within. So we're just telling it, look, you can keep expanding larger than that circle. We don't care if we, you know, you don't have to basically mask the edge of that circle. So that's one thing that you can do there. To animate these, all I simply did was just used the scale functionality. So say I wanted this one to scale in, I could set the scale function, set this one to be zero, and just sort of have a grow over time. I could even just create like a position property here and then sort of animate this across. So something like that. You can also right click, make all of these easy as just to sort of soften them out. But that's basically all that I did here. One thing I had to do for this particular layer was I also had to animate the CC lens size. So I also made this go from zero up to 20. So it's outside of that circle and that's what gives it that edge. So if I make this smaller or larger, it's going to basically stay at that same outline. So this just kind of creates an interesting sort of effect if you wanted to do that 
in your own. The only other thing that I did was for this layer underneath, which is the black and white layer, I basically just animated the opacity as this was as the shape layers were coming on. So this is the advantage of having them all in their own sort of layers. You can customize exactly what they're going to look like and how they're going to act individually. Just gives you a lot more control over any of these sort of animations. Now I have seen videos where you can do this sort of thing using expressions. The only thing with the expression is you then have to manually go through and change the numbers to basically adjust all of this. You can do it using sliders and things like that. But I just find that it's easier for anyone to follow if you're just looking at, say, a layer like this. You can easily just go through, anyone can really just go through and adjust the lightness and the saturation and everything like that. The last step that I did over the top was I basically just took all of these. I just come up to layer, down to pre-compose. I then pre-compose this into its own layer into its own composition and over the top, I just right click, create a new adjustment layer. And to that, I added the posterize time. That's what gives it that slow frame rate sort of effect. So that's it as far as this video. Hopefully you've picked up a few tips and tricks you can use in your own videos. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. If you want to check out more videos just like this one, then you can check out this video over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next.